Okay, cool. Uh, all right. Uh, I will get going then. Uh, so, Nimin uh, Hao, Wo Zhao, Skyler. Um, and that's about the extent of my Mandarin, so I apologize. Uh, but I am an engineer at Sci Fi. And today I'm going to be talking about um, an open source project that we've been uh, working on probably for a little over a year now on building uh, the next generation of the fertile compiler. And uh, with that, I will get going. So I have two introductory slides that in my mind try to express what is um, the reason why chisel and fertile are groundbreaking technology. And the first is from the perspective of language power. So uh, what I mean by that is Chisel is really cool because it takes the last 60 years of software engineering and enables all of these modern programming paradigms applied to normal hardware design. Uh, and these are paradigms which are just not available with languages like uh, Verilog or VHDL. And so what do I mean by this? Um, well, Chisel has because it's a domain specific language embedded in Scala, gives you access to extremely flexible parameterization, uh, powerful parametric polymorphism. So in the case of this uh, cobbled together example, uh, you can make an ALU, which is able to operate on different types of inputs um, and you can write it once and reuse it. Additionally, you can use uh, standard programming paradigms like object-oriented programming, giving you access to inheritance, as well as functional programming, um, if you like that. Uh, also, there's, you know, for modern languages, this gives you first-class function support and a large standard library uh, to enable, um, you know, your, your developers to not have to um, write the same code over and over again. And in aggregate, uh, this is really about enabling design reuse. You can write generators and then you can reuse them across technologies, across processes, between designs, between teams. Um, and at least at Sci-Fi, we've discovered that this makes developers more productive. And uh, also, if anybody wants to play with this um, snippet that I show here, you can pull it up in uh, SCASTY with the very long link at the bottom. Now, however, uh, this is not all of the power of Chisel. So the second really interesting uh, thing about Chisel is that it's constructed as a classic three-stage compiler. So what I mean by this is Chisel is really just the front end and the front end language for doing hardware design. There's this whole uh, compilation process structured like a traditional three-stage compiler where Chisel is the front end, there's an optimizing uh, compiler middle end, and then there is a back end that produces Verilog. The handoff point for this, as this, uh, these sli this slide is showing on the left, uh, is that, uh, well, let me just run through how this works. You write your generator as a Scala program. That runs through a Chisel elaboration phase. That produces both uh, an intermediate representation called fertile, flexible intermediate representation for RTL, as well as an extremely powerful and flexible metadata file um, that contains annotations. These are um, extra metadata about your circuit, which you can't adequately express in fertile IR. This is then uh, hands off to the current um, implementation of a fertile compiler, the Scala fertile compiler. Uh, this is what you if you're just a Chisel user, you're using this without, without knowing about it. But if you're more on the developer side or doing some hardware research, you may be uh, writing passes for this. Um, and the Scala Fertile compiler runs, optimizes, and produces Verilog. Uh, now, the thing that's really amazing about this, and this was really sort of um, uh, in uh, the first people to really do this that I'm aware of, or Jack Koenig and Adam Israelovitz when they came up with this whole scheme. But what it enables is the power of um, compilers brought to hardware design. And for this, um, there are 
uh, what's great is that you can write custom transforms that then run, get scheduled in the Scala Fertile compiler. And this is enabling powerful APIs that some of you may have used in Chisel, like um, the Boring Utils cross-module um, resolving API, as well as a number of things that we use at Sci-5 for doing memory extraction, module prefixing, um, and literally uh, most of the interesting things that we're doing are relying on this. Um, and just to mention a few others, there's also the FireSim project. So this is doing accelerated FPGA simulation, which is entirely relying on uh, fertile transforms to do this, as well as um, open source projects like the Ascent Simulator, some runtime fault injection, circuit obfuscation, and many, many other things. This is an extremely powerful, flexible uh, paradigm. And just to show this more, um, even more concretely, uh, sort of the chisel program that you may have, that I showed uh, two slides back, that runs, uh, elaborates, produces a JSON file at the top, as well as a fertile file at the bottom. And then those run through the Scala fertile compiler. And on the other side, you get Verilog. Now, however, while I reiterate that this is an absolutely amazing way of doing, of building hardware, it is also, um, there are a number of issues with this. Um, first, the compile times are slow and they don't necessarily scale very well. Uh, if you're working with, you know, small um, hobbyist designs, you may not hit this, but as you try and work on larger designs, multi-core designs, uh, you wind up introducing in the chisel fertile compilation process, a latency of like, you know, order of 10 minutes. And additionally, a very large memory footprint may be required to actually get your design through. This unfortunately goes against the productivity gains that you get from higher level programming paradigms because your developers are now sitting with a 10 minute, uh, you know, 10 minute debug loop while they're designing hardware. And there's always a relevant XKCD for everything. Uh, but this is a classic one of, you know, if you're waiting for your work to compile, you're already off doing something else, uh, you know, browsing Billy Billy or whatever you're doing, at least I am. And um, second, uh, necessarily, uh, Jack, Adam, and I had to build a lot of bespoke compiler infrastructure to support this. Um, what it fundamentally comes down to is the Scala Fertile compiler is a compiler. And so you need things like the ability to write passes, the ability to schedule passes. Um, and all of this results in somewhere around 10,000 lines of code just to support all this. Uh, unfortunately, we had to reinvent the wheel with a lot of this. Uh, third, uh, a big request for a long time has been the ability to generate parametric Verilog, but this is incredibly hard to do for us because Fertile IR is itself not parametric. Um, unfortunately, there's, there's no really good way around this. Uh, and then finally, uh, the fact that Fertile IR is fixed and doesn't have the ability to add custom IR nodes creates problems if we want to introduce more um, higher level abstractions, what things in uh, Verilog like structs and interfaces, as well as case statements. Some of this you can do by uh, compiler passes that raise the representation, but these are heuristics. They're not guaranteed to work. And then finally, there's a lot of interesting things that are not, excuse me, are not actually in Verilog that you may want to represent with an IR. These are things like clock and reset domains, uh, power information, traditionally encoded in like a UPF file, um, hierarchy, which may be different from your actual Verilog hierarchy, or more mundane things that are useful like uh, dialects for describing finite state machines. So in combination, um, when reviewing all this, uh, we sort of came to the, the conclusion that the solution is obvious and we just need to rebuild the compiler. So um, this is obviously a large undertaking, but um, however, there are uh, some great uh, open source projects that are helping us with this. Uh, and the big one here is MLIR. So I imagine that some of you have heard of this before. 
It's a project that originated at Google under the LLVM project. Uh, and it's basically best in class compiler infrastructure uh, that is intended to be uh, malleable and customizable for whatever your uh, specific needs may be. So what do I mean by this? Uh, this is basically, this grew out of the need of, there are lots of different machine learning IRs and a lot of people in the machine learning community are solving the same problems over and over again, but it would be nice if all that can be unified in one, um, in one system. So what started as machine learning IR quickly became something else. And the ML can stand for anything you want, but typically it's referred to as multi-level. But what's great about this is it turns out it's a fantastic um, infrastructure for representing things like circuit IRs. So something like fertile can be represented in that, and that is eventually what we do, and I'll talk about that next. Uh, but just more about MLIR. Uh, what's great is it's suitable for building new IRs, so new abstractions, as well as the ability to have multiple IRs exist uh, in the same design. And a lot of times this thing, this can come up, um, things like you may have power information, but you also have Verilog. Uh, and finally, more on the performance side, uh, written in C++. Yes, C++ is ugly, um, but it is a low cost abstraction over the actual programs that you get. And MLIR generally is extremely performant um, and uses a lot of its own custom libraries to ensure that it is performant. So with that, um, there is an LLVM incubator project called Circuit. This is C-I-R-C-T, uh, stands for um, Circuit IR Compilers and Tools. Uh, and this is an LLVM incubator project. So what that means is it's a project that um, is intended to eventually become upstreamed with LLVM and MLIR. But uh, at this point, it is generally um, next generation compiler infrastructure for hardware compilers. What this means is that uh, it, is a great, it is a great resource if you have a, something that looks like a compiler problem where you want to generate Verilog. And currently this supports a number of different hardware dialects. Dialects are uh, MLIR lingo for different IRs. So within this circuit project, we've built out a fertile dialect as well as other lower level dialects uh, for describing hardware. So some of these are in this family of RTL dialects, dialects for describing combinational logic, sequential logic, general hardware structures like modules uh, and hierarchies, as well as a system Verilog dialect. So for actually representing system Verilog constructs. And this is, you know, weird system Verilog constructs like for statements, binds, system Verilog assertions, basically the everything that you could want if you wanted to target Verilog. Now there's other higher level dialects that live in this, which um, I'm not involved with specifically, but things trying to define um, higher level hardware abstractions, like these timing insensitive dialects. And then there are also others that are looking at how more programming language dialects, things like LLVM, uh, a vector dialect, TensorFlow dialect can actually compile down to um, and interoperate with circuit. So um, if all that was just gobbledygook, what you can take away from this is there is a new tool within this ecosystem called FIR tool, uh, F-I-R-T-O-O-L, which is a drop-in replacement for your standard fertile uh, FIR RTL Scala fertile compiler. So what does this look like? Well, um, I always like to show code examples. And uh, what this is showing is if you start with this circuit on the top, this chisel circuit, and all this is, is it's just, uh, just an adder. Uh, you're taking A and B as inputs uh, and you have C and that's your output. And you're connecting, you're adding A and B and assigning it to C. If you use the standard things that you've probably seen, if you're for a chisel user, something like the chisel stage API using emit churtle um, and passing this in, you then get a fertile circuit out of this. And then you can then go and compile this traditionally, like using the Scala fertile compiler, 
uh, fertile-i foo.fir and you get Verilog, or you can use fur tool telling it that you would like to lower to the RTL dialects and also that you'd like to output Verilog and you get formally equivalent Verilog out. So uh, glossing over the last side, this is a tool that is a drop in replacement for the existing Scala fertile compiler. So there's going to be some questions with this, specifically how, how is this all working and you know what, what is going on behind the scenes here. Uh, through a sequence of additional slides, I'm trying to let you peek behind the curtain and see how this compilation process actually works. So the first thing is how are we actually representing fertile IR? And uh, you've heard me say this before, but it's using a fertile dialect. So um, there is another tool in addition to fur tool, something called circuit translate, which just lets you import the design uh, without doing any compilation, but just convert it to a fertile dialect representation. Uh, and what you'll see is if you're used to working with fertile compiler transforms or looking at fertile IR, this will look very similar. The only real difference is that all of the type information is explicit in the fertile dialect whereas some of it is inferred via analysis passes in the Scala fertile compiler. So what you can see for this is you have construct like you have your circuit foo, that's gonna map to a um, MLIR operation, a fertile circuit operation. You have your module and port declarations, those show up here. Um, oh. Additionally, with inputs and outputs and type information that you see from here, uh, you have your primitive operations like add, node declarations as well, all in an SSA representation, and additionally, fertile connect um, shows up. And there's other things I'm not highlighting here, but I'm just trying to show that there's sort of this one-to-one -one correspondence between your traditional fertile IR and your fertile dialect. So at this point, I've acted like everything works, um, but it turns out a lot of stuff already does work. So I want to highlight some of the very cool stuff that we've already had working with this compiler. Uh, so the first thing is with inference. Um, this is something which I don't know how many people uh, use with Chisel, but it is, uh, you know, originally one of the big selling points of using Chisel is that we can infer the wits for you and you don't have to be explicit. And we do that uh, basically with the same algorithm that, that is happening in the Scala fertile compiler. So what this is showing, what I'm highlighting with this red box, is that uh, you have a fertile vector uh, of depth one, and its underlying type is unknown. It's a uint, uh, but its width is not known. So in here, this is connected um, to a vector that is a two-bit thing. And the end result after the, the width inference runs is that you get this uh, two-bit width inferred. If anything is not able to be inferred, you'll also get the similar kind of error that you get out of the Scala fertile compiler. Um, but this is a lot of um, hard work done by uh, one of our engineers named Fabian Schweiki. So additionally, lower types. Um, this is probably something that you may actually not want us to see implementing. Um, but currently, we're working to try and get an exact drop-in replacement for the Scala fertile compiler. Um, and for that, we need things like lower types. So what this is showing here from the, the previous example, just continuing on, is that from this vector that you have here, so this is a one, uh, a, a one depth vector of a two-bit uint, and this gets splatted out into a vector of n underscore zero, just like you're used to seeing in your output variable. So this is all working. Um, the initial version of this was actually done by an open source contributor, not at Sci-5, uh, named Mike Erbach. Um, but then this has been picked up and we're, we're working to improve it and make it better. Additionally, um, the expand whens pass. So this is something that is taking when statements and converting them to muxes. Uh, this is a lot of hard work uh, done by an engineer, um, Andrew Young. And what you can see here is you start with a when statement. Technically, this is a, uh, um, a conditionally valid statement uh, that gets expanded to a when, but that's okay. Um, but you have a when, and the end result of this is because the alternative connection is an invalid value, um, this actually just winds up as a connection from the input to the output. Um, but the takeaway here is that we have uh, expand whens up and running. 
And we're basically almost at um, a full uh, chisel output to uh, Verilog. Now, uh, one thing that I haven't talked about at all with this uh, is, uh, well, how are we handling annotations? So this is actually one of the things that I am super excited about with um, uh, the circuit project is that we're able to actually uh, pull in all of the annotations from the annotation file and add them as attributes in the IR. So this is a dramatic architectural change from the Scala Fertile compiler, but for us, it has a lot of benefits. Basically, we're able to then um, transform the IR without having to worry about uh, defining a rename map to keep our annotations up to date. It just happens naturally. So what this looks like is if you start with this circuit here, I have two annotations. One of them is supposed to be affiliated with uh, the input A of module foo and the other one with this register B inside. And the fur tool has an option dash annotation file that will suck in an annotation file. And the end result of that is that in the fertile dialect representation, you wind up with your annotations actually attached directly to um, in this case, the, the A port, and also to the register B. So what follows from that is custom transform support, um, specifically for um, some of the entry Scala Fertile compiler transforms. Uh, and if you've done much work with this, you've noticed that annotations go hand in hand with transforms in the sense that the annotations are controlling the transforms. So in this sense, um, we have an, a module inline pass, which is controlled by um, an inline annotation, just like in the Scala Fertile compiler. And the result of this is saying that you would like to inline module bar in circuit foo, every instance of module bar. So if you compile this as so, passing in the annotation file and with your dash inline flag, you then wind up where, uh, based on the inline annotation, this gets inline. So um, super cool. Uh, and just highlighting uh, more of the really cool work that we've been able to get, get up and stand up with this. Uh, now, uh, just a quick summary of sort of where we are, status, what works and what doesn't work. Uh, most of the major lowering transforms reported. This is lower types, expand lens, uh, and infer widths. Some custom transforms are ported uh, memory in, or excuse me, module inlining, memory black boxing. Um, and the following is currently work in progress of um, churtle removal. So currently we can support high fertile, but not churtle. Uh, reset inference is not yet up and running, but there is an outstanding pull request about that. Uh, sub access lowering is something that we're working on as a part of a refactor of our lower types pass. Um, and then also the zoo of different custom transforms that are out there. Um, and additionally, uh, one thing that I have not talked about is how this integrates with Chisel other than as a command line utility, but there is a uh, completely experimental um, but published, um, published, published Scala project called Chisel Circuit, uh, which actually kind of stitches in the circuit as the back end of a chisel compilation process. Uh, note that this is extremely experimental. Please don't use this in production or anything. But if you want to play around with it without having to do any kind of command line stuff, this is one way of doing it. So uh, this is all well and good. And this is very interesting for compiler nerds. But if you want to actually get down, down into the week, or if you want to ra raise uh, pop up one level. Um, this compiler is actually about 10 to 20 X faster than the existing fertile compiler. So what I'm showing on this slide are normalized numbers for um, three uh, sci five designs. And um, this is all within 10 to 20 X. So what I'm getting at here is um, if you're just a chisel user, um, thanks for listening to this. But the takeaway is uh, eventually, we'll flip a switch and your chisel and fertile compile times, well, specifically the fertile compile times, will get much faster in the future. So this is something cool to look forward to. Now, just revisiting the chisel and fertile issues that I talked about um, at the beginning, 
Um, so the most topical thing, um, we're looking at a 20x uh, faster fertile compile time, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, we've been able to um, drop a lot of the bespoke, bespoke compiler infrastructure just by adopting MLIR. Um, and I can let people um, smarter than me figure out how to make this super, super efficient. Uh, I haven't touched at all on ability to emit parametric Verilog or custom IR nodes, but these are both things that MLIR is expected to help with. Basically, because it allows us to define new IR constructs, you know, we can define Verilog modules that take parameters and then think about how we can raise um, our fertile IR or our fertile dialect uh, to then map to that, or things like structs and interfaces, how can we do heuristic raising for that? So not solved, but hopefully um, something that this new infrastructure will help with. And just finally, um, if any of this is interesting to you, um, I encourage you to um, reach out or get um, in touch with us uh, via GitHub. Uh, the circuit project is entirely um, open source on this, uh, this link here, github.com LLVM uh, circuit. Uh, and if any of this is scary, I just want to reiterate that um, we are totally committed to the success of Chisel and Fertile. We're just trying to take one piece that's been um, a little bit problematic for us and make it a lot better. Uh, also, if, if you're interested in reaching out, uh, we do have on the LLVM discourse, which is a forum. Um, under the LLVM incubator section, um, you can get in touch with any of us. And there's also a, the general Discord server for um, LLVM. And uh, just to pop all the way back to the top of the stack, uh, I'm just one of many people that are working on this. Um, and just to give a quick shout out to a lot of the people at sci fi doing this. Uh, Andrew Young, uh, Andrew Lenharth, Pratayan, Fabian, Hanshin, Alexi, Jack and Adam, uh, George, Ram, and uh, Chris. And then there are a large number of open source contributors that are quite active. John Demi, Mike Erbach, uh, Stephen, Hedetto, Chris, and Amelie. Uh, so if any of this is interesting, um, I would love to see you get involved. Or if you have research doing hardware compiler type stuff, this may be great infrastructure for you. Um, but if not, if you're just a Chisel user, um, hopefully stay tuned and we'll have um, some exciting performance improvements uh, ready for you in um, some amount of time. So uh, that's it. Uh, thank you very much.